So this video was inspired by one of our subscribers who asked the question essentially is, uh, why do house prices continue to rise? Will they continue to rise? And why have they become less affordable? Uh, he makes the comment that it used to take uh, two to three years of salary uh, for the average house price. And yet today it is somewhere much higher than that multiple and therefore makes certain areas unaffordable. So in this video, what I'm going to do is um, answer that question, but uh, the, the answer is, is not a simple yes, no, this is why it happens. There's many factors uh, and given in different situations that actually come into play here. And so the questions that I'm going to answer in this video are, is why it's not a demand and supply issue, as many people think, uh, why house prices actually arise in the first place, uh, what are this, why are certain places unaffordable? In other words, there's certain areas where they're more affordable and some places they become less affordable. Are houses more expensive because they cost more to build? Uh, which is certainly in the current climate, that seems a reasonable assumption. Why entry level houses, which used to cost two to three times of an annual salary, cost much, much more in most places. What will cause the next property crash and when is that likely to be? And I have to say, it's not what most people expect. And, and finally, what can you do about it? Hi, my name is Jim J. Davidson and I first invested in property in 1973. I completed my first new build development in 2006. As you can imagine, I've made lots of mistakes along the way, but thankfully I've got some things right and I've managed to build a property development business. In this channel, I want to help you on your journey and perhaps share some of that knowledge with you. And so through this channel, which I hope you will subscribe to, or through our membership app, which I hope you will join, and incidentally it's free, um, you can learn a little bit more about building houses and building a property development business. The app is available wherever you get your app from, whether you're on iOS or you have an Android phone, um, or you can get accesses on desktop, and you'll find a link in the description below. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the rest of this video, and please post your comments in the description below if you have any comments to make. Take most economic activity and we would talk about things being a demand and supply. So for instance, within the house building industry, there are certain materials that are rising rapidly. Timber is one of them. Um, I've heard of quotes of it going up as much as 80% over the last six months. Um, there's a supply issue there, clearly. There's a knock-on effect from COVID uh, when factories um, around the world were shut down. Um, and then there's a transportation issue where there has been holdups there. Uh, there's also a, a, a capacity element uh, because house building has really accelerated, uh, which is to do with demand. And there are also, when we talk about transportation, there was like the blockage of the Suez Canal doesn't seem that that should be that significant. It was, it was a week, but that has a huge impact on the global supply. And, and so not just in the UK, but there's demands for certain materials. Um, so uh, demand and supply seems reasonable. And, and certainly it's a factor in the current explosion of prices because uh, people are actually getting desperate and because there's a limited number of houses on the market, they are tending to uh, offer higher amounts. Uh, but what you'll find is that the surveyors are not are being much more cautious. Uh, and the reason is that they're essentially working for the banks uh, and the banks are concerned because of the collapse in 2008 of the property market and they were left with so much debt. So uh, so there there is caution on the surveyors. So you will often find that the amount that you'll be lent um, if you want to uh, essentially buy a house at a much higher price than it's been valued at, then you're going to have to come up with the cash in order to be able to do that. So it would seem reasonable, it's a, de a demand and supply issue, 
but it really isn't. Um, so if we think back to, uh, as I just previously mentioned, 2008, uh, there was a collapse of the property market. Did demand just suddenly go away? Um, I mean, we've been told since at the beginning of this decade and, and actually towards the end of the, sorry, the beginning of this century and towards the end of the last century that there was a housing shortage and we're continually told that. So did that suddenly, that demand stop for a few years and then it suddenly came back? So clearly it's not a demand and supply issue generally with housing, which leads me on to the second point. So why do house prices rise? Well, there are two factors. Inflation is certainly a factor. Um, so when I first bought my first property in 1973, an investment property, which my brother and I bought um, in the student area of Edinburgh, uh, we bought that property for seven and a half thousand. Uh, by 1977, I bought my brother out of his share and that property at that time was worth 14,000. And uh, two years later, that property was worth 21,000. Now, that was uh, not a demand and supply issue, but it was an inflation issue. In fact, if you go back to 1973, there had been a significant uh, 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 stock market crash and in fact, in normal times, you would have seen property prices uh, crash as well. But it was disguised because we had very high inflation. Uh, we had inflation uh, back in 1975 of 25 plus percent. Um, and that continued through much of the 70s and indeed into uh, certainly the first half of the 80s before it was brought under control. Um, and when I say brought under control, down to single digit figures with, that would make people and people are worried about inflation currently. We Our last uh, statistic was two and a half percent and people are worried that it'll go three, four, five, six percent. Um, contrast that to the 1970s and, it, and, it, and we would have welcomed that level of inflation then. So, uh, so it's, not, uh, it's not significantly about the uh, inflation. Uh, high inflation will push up prices. Um, and and this, uh, as a side note, uh, one of the benefits of high inflation, if you've got property, is it will lower your uh, relative borrowing costs because your actual debt will seem as a smaller proportion um, of your actual um, asset. Um, so what is it that really affects house prices? It's, it's to do with uh, the amount of credit that's available. So in 2008, what happened was that credit dried up and therefore people could not get qualify for a mortgage or development finance. Uh, so developers couldn't actually uh, uh, qualify for that type of development finance. And indeed, this is one of the reasons that we, we are kind of struggling at the moment with uh, enough houses is that a lot of the small developers that would produce three to five houses a year um, have been, were wiped out and they've never returned to, uh, uh, to, to the uh, to the industry and so there's a huge base there that, that we've lost and what we've ended up with is uh, very few large very large developers and so there and that illustrates that there actually is a huge opportunity for smaller developers now but uh, nevertheless that's what happened uh, back in 2008 2012 when it wiped out a lot of developers <sighs> So why in certain places are houses unaffordable? Well, this will in part tie in to uh, why our houses, uh, uh, certainly entry level houses tend to be more than two to three years salary as they were at one time. Uh, but the second thing which I want to really delve into in this section is about uh, really what creates uh, more expensive properties, taking, for instance, London or, or, or any of the larger cities, uh, particularly the capital cities um, such as London, Edinburgh, Cardiff and Belfast, that tends to be more expensive in those is cities. Uh, but then in addition to that, larger cities tend to be much more expensive when you get out into 
certain areas they become less expensive um, and and when you go uh, from the south to the north they tend to be more affordable so so what is it what's happening there that causes that great disparity between the different prices and it's a concept known as that all act economic activity goes in to the land. So let's look at this, and I had explored this in a previous video, but let's just refresh ourselves with it. Um, so imagine that you have a city here, um, and it doesn't really matter, it's a, it's a larger city, uh, but let's assume, assume it was uh, 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 an area which uh, really has suffered. Um, it was had a low economic activity. Let's say at one time in the 1970s, they had a lot of industrial activity, maybe like a shipbuilding or somewhere like that. So it became quite depressed. And, and so therefore, um, what you would find is that the, 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 the value of housing there would be relatively low. But then let's assume that this, uh, th this a particular city now starts to maybe get involved in the green energy revolution. So maybe they bring in a company that starts to manufacture electric cars or, or hydrocarbon cars, or maybe they uh, come in for renewable energies. So let's assume that they attract some sort of new industry. Um, so what, that, what then happens is that uh, from an area where they had uh, perhaps uh, a higher than national unemployment, people start to be employed, but then not only that, that these industries are able to afford higher salaries uh, because they're uh, at the cutting edge and therefore there tends to be a bit more profitable. Uh, certainly that's what generally happens with businesses, that they tend to be more profitable um, and then the margins as other competitors come in get squeezed. And so th th there's a lot more money fl flying around there. And so people uh, start to move in, they start to want um, some houses. So the incomes uh, produce uh, greater affordability for houses and that starts to move the prices up. But actually what's really happening is that the land within this area is becoming scarcer. And so what happens is that all the economic activity, the generation of that economic activity, the value always, always ends up in the land. And so land therefore becomes much more expensive and therefore if the land is more expensive it is the house that then starts to go up in value and let me just also point out something here because there's there's a misconception that it's actually house prices that go up it's actually land values that go up so it's the land underneath the house that actually goes up in value and a lot of people mistake that in the u.s where i lived for nine years uh, particularly for commercial property, they actually separate those two assets, the land value and the house, uh, sorry, and the building that sits on top of it. The building that sits on top of it, they actually allow you to depreciate because it does depreciate the fabric. You think about uh, people who buy houses to do up. Um, part of the reason that that value has dropped is because it needs some work to bring it up to its previous value. Um, so it needs a new kitchen, it needs a new bathroom, it needs redecoration, um, it maybe needs more landscaping outside, it maybe needs certain things that fix, maybe the roof is deteriorated or whatever it is. And so therefore that renovation process then brings it up to a new value and if they cost it out properly they will make a profit but of course uh, it can be quite slim depending on how good they are at, at actually controlling their costs. So land value always goes in, sorry, all, uh, economic activity value always goes in to the land price. And so therefore, as that becomes much more expensive, people then move out to smaller developments, um, particularly uh, if there's access, because in fact, then you take a smaller development, but let's say they, they, they put in an infrastructure in there, let's say they put in a rail line, which makes it much, very easy to commute between these two centers. So now what happens is that this becomes a secondary area for housing, but it becomes very desirable because of the ease to get in to the center of, uh, of work. Now, 
There's an interesting question that now comes up that's arisen through the pandemic. Is the center of activity going to move out to the suburbs and therefore does that become, or to the smaller communities, does that become more valuable? So in other words, what actually happens is the, the, the center of economic activity increases in this area because people are working from their homes and therefore the land values go up in this area which will ultimately push up the price of the houses. Um, and having said that, a lot of, uh, although there's a lot of this talk of home working, a lot of activity still has to happen in premises. And uh, the question is, it, will we have a hybrid or will people really continue to work from home? I think, I think it's not going to be as big as people actually expect, I think, in the long term. Uh, certainly there will be more, but I don't think it's going to be as big as people think. So do house prices go up because the price of materials go up? To some extent, there is house price inflation. Uh, broadly speaking, if you look through the last 20 years, you will find that broadly house price cost to build has gone up by about 3%. We're living in extraordinary times, but that will settle back down to some extent. How much extent we, we, is just an unknown, uh, but it will settle down. So there is a certain amount of house price inflation in, core, in terms of development, but um, house prices don't really go up because the cost of build goes up. Um, if, and the reason for that is just going back to the previous. So you've got your, your house here, um, which has cost X amount of pounds to build. Um, and that price, let's assume that we are in a bit more stable times and that that f figure is fairly fixed. Um, I, I, but let's say now, because the, the prices have gone up, what happens is that it's actually the land value uh, which would then need to absorb the increase. So let's say that this now costs 20% more to build. Uh, well, the 20, so essentially um, a developer's model is that you take um, house price, in other words, what it's going to sell for, we call that GDV, um, house price, um, and then build cost, Uh, profit, and when I say build costs, I'm talking about all the costs that go into developing it, uh, remediation to the ground or whatever, whatever it is, with all the costs that come out of it. And then finally we have land value. So if, if this all goes to uh, a large, you know, in, in other words, if this doesn't really alter that much, um, but this goes up, let's say it goes up by 20%. Um, the profit will go up uh, similarly by 20%. In other words, it's not going up, it's not giving a 20% additional margin. It goes up by a percentage of, of this. So your profit is always a, a margin of that. And the minimum that should be is 25%. Um, of your gross development value. And the reason for that partly is uh, that there's some risk involved in here, so you need that additional buffer. Uh, but the second thing, and of course, what I'll also say about that is it is gross profit. So a lot of people think, oh gosh, they're making that amount of money. No, actually there's all the business expenses that has to come out of that. And also there's the, the downtime in between houses that have to be a, accounted for. So it's, um, so it's not, it's, it's gross profit that goes into the business and then all the expenditures, the salaries and everything else come out of it. And then there's a, not, a net profit and it's, the net profits are likely to be um, uh, in, in sort of like a much smaller uh, you know, percentage. It tends to be uh, for a builder about 7%. As a developer, you can certainly do more than that. And that's one of the things that I teach people. But nevertheless, um, so the the... The, the value therefore then has to come out of the land value. There is no additional way. So if you don't take it out of the land value, then this becomes an unviable uh, project and therefore it just wouldn't be worth doing. So it has to come out of the land value. Um, conversely, as things move up, 
then the land value increases. So lands, land value does actually go up and down, um, and we'll talk about that in a little bit later, uh, but the reality is that the, it's not the house cost of building that pushes the price up, it's the, uh, it's the general market. In other words, it's really the land value that's pushing up the price of the houses. So having recorded all of this footage today, I discovered that I ended up with 40 minutes worth of footage and I just felt that was too long to post on YouTube. So I've decided to separate it into two parts. Um, so we've covered the first four sections and we'll cover next week the final three sections. That is, uh, why do entry level houses that used to cost two to three times the income cost significantly more multiples of income than they do now. Um, what causes property markets to crash and when is the next one likely to be? And finally, what can you do about it? How can you help yourself? So I hope you'll look forward to that video. In the meantime, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe now. And if you've uh, liked this video, please give us a like and share. And also, uh, there's lots of other videos on this channel. We're over 90 videos now, so please have a look around and uh, see what else there is to, uh, to consume. Um, until the next time, until next week, when we have part two of this video, please stay safe, and I look forward to speaking to you a week today. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos, then click to watch the next video. Please remember to visit our website at builditandprosper.com to get our app, or click on the button on the YouTube header if you're on desktop.